And I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. And so follow with me. Psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we come to you completely dependent on you, Lord. You are the source of life. You are life. Father, and I pray, Lord, through your Spirit that you will teach us, that you will guide us, that you will convict us. Lord, that through this preaching of the Word, that you will bring us to a place of reckoning, that you will allow us to repent, that you will give us the gift of repentance, that you will help us to be more devoted to you, that you will teach us the things that we do not know, and that you will make us the things that we are not. Father, we thank you, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so when I was thinking about what to preach here at Benoni Bible Church, and, you know, and for the years that we've gone through, you know, every year is a difficult year. Every year is filled with mountaintops and valley experiences for all of us. You know, and, but when we look back, we can see the faithfulness of God. We can see the goodness of God. We can see the love of God and how God led us like this beautiful shepherd that He is. And then we can look forward to 2024 and we know that God will still be faithful, that God will still be merciful, and that God will still accomplish His word in our lives, and that we will still be led by this beautiful shepherd that we have. So therefore i chosen Psalm 23. You know, some, some in the Middle, uh, Middle East, in the ancient times, sheep was very a high commodity, right? Sheep was very important. You know, you used the wool of the sheep to make your clothes, and you used the sheep's meat to eat, and then also sheep was used to sacrifice. So it was a very high value, value animal, right? And then we also know that sheep are dependable creature, creatures, they, they, they cannot grow up in a the wild. They need a shepherd. We know that sheep are very dumb. They just follow anything. And we know that sheep can't look after themselves. And sheep needs a shepherd. Doesn't it speak to us? <laughs> the, are we not depend, dependent on the Lord for our daily needs? for our protection, for our leading, for our guidance. You know, and it's also amazing to see that the, the shepherds of back then has, had such a beautiful love for the sheep. They, they named their sheep. You know, it's just like us. We, have sh we, we don't have sheep at home, but we have chickens at home, and every chicken has a name. Just like the cats, just like the dogs, they have names. So I'm not allowed to slaughter the chickens anymore. Because <laughs> they have a name. Coco Bunny, Parsley, Jack. But so the, the shepherd knew the sheep and the, the shepherd gave them names. The love for the, sh the, the sheep runs so deeply that the shepherd would sleep in the wild with the sheep in an enclosed area with one door. And he will sleep in the doorway. So if a predator wants to come and steal the sheep or a, a thief who would want to come and steal the sheep, they need to jump over the shepherd. It's also beautiful to see that the that Scripture calls us sheep. They don't call us lions. You see, if we have to compare a lion and a sheep, it's an easy comparison. 
A lion is fierce, strong, but a sheep is weak, defenseless. But a sheep never worries for its safety. Why? Because it has the shepherd. Lions are mighty hunters. But there are days where lions don't eat. Sheep are not hunters. But they never grow hungry. Why? Because they have a shepherd. So you can answer the question. It's, it's okay. The lion depends upon his own strength and cunning. The sheep doesn't need to. Why? Because it has a shepherd, right? In Psalm 34 verse 10, it observes, The lion might grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. In other words, uh, for us, we can be strong, we can be um, ambitious, and we can be self-dependable, and we can be successful in, in whatever we do. But, but if we depend on the Lord, He will lead us, He will guide us. And, and that brings me to my first point, is that my Lord is a leader. And we can look at the first four verses. Psalm 23, and let's read it again. Verses 1 to 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You know, a quick observation about Psalm 23 is that there's so many um, possessive pronouns. My, me, I. That's some of the first words that we learn as children. It says like this, my toy, it's my food, my wife, my church, my God, my car, my country. You're making it your own. But here the best words is the Lord is my shepherd. Now let's start with the Lord is. And it's not some figment of our imagination it's not somebody that is made up, but it is Yahweh God. In, in Genesis, He's revealed as Creator God. In Exodus, He's revealed as the Great I Am. It's God that pre-existed, never, like He was not created. He always existed. From eternity past to eternity future, He will exist. God didn't create us to validate His existence. He always existed. In Him, time belongs. He's everywhere at all times. He's all-powerful. He has no equal. He's no rival. This is my Lord. This is our Lord. Yahweh, the great I Am, the personal, self-existing God that reveals Himself through His Son, to us that we can call Abba Father. Phew, what a beautiful thought. He is God Almighty and He's our shepherd. My shepherd. Think about that personal possessive pronoun. My shepherd. He knows me he has called me. He knows me when I'm sitting down. He knows me when I'm standing up. He knows me when I walk. He knows me when I stop. He knows me when I fear. He knows me when I, don't, when I have doubt. Yet He still leads me. He still guides me. Beautiful. The Lord being my shepherd. The Lord being your shepherd. Psalm 28 verse 9, it says, Save your people and bless your inheritors. Be their shepherd also. So it's God's will that He would shepherd us. It's prophesied. In Isaiah 40 verse 11, it speaks like, like a shepherd, He will tend His flock. In His arms, He will gather the lambs and carry them to His bosom. For we will gently lead 
the nursing ewes. Our shepherd. And this is the relationship that Jesus has with us. That He's our great shepherd. In John 10, 14 it says, I am the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, verse 20, Now the God of peace you brought up from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep. 1 Peter 2.25 For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardians of your soul. Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. And David is confident in his shepherd. And now, how appropriate that the shepherd king could write the psalm like this. And and I used to read this from the shepherd's point of view. Because I'm a shepherd, right? I'm an (laughs) under-shepherd, like thinking a bit too much about myself. But then I realized, but listen, let's read the psalm from a sheep's point of view. Because you and I are equally dependent on the Lord. No, when, we, when He is the shepherd, we shall not want. Ooh, and that's a, that's a wild statement, is it? In 2023, we found ourselves in places of want. You know, we, we were running to Google to find answers. We were looking for politicians to solve country problems. Everywhere else except to the Lord. And our great want that we had in our souls and in our spirit was just magnified that we didn't go to the great shepherd. I shall not want. In verse 2. He leads me. Psalm 23, He makes me lay down in green pastures. You know, and so and when we find our fulfillment and when our needs are being fulfilled in the Lord, there are four blessings that, that Psalm 23 reveals to us. Four blessings. And there's the four blessings that we can agree with David, the psalmist, to say, but I will not want. Blessing number one is that he makes me lay down in green pastures. You know, if, if we look at the characteristic of a sheep, when a sheep goes into new pastures, they don't lay down, they eat. The only time when they lay down is when they are completely filled. And sheep are very sensitive beings. They they are very sensitive. Even a child can startle them. But here it says, the great shepherd in his leading, they will, I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not want. I shall not want. And he makes me lay down in green pastures. It's a place of rest. Speaks of safety. Speaks about security. A sheep doesn't sleep, lay down easily and sleep unless he knows that he's protected. That he's guarded. Are we not protected? Are we not guarded? Has the Lord not brought us to a place of safety in Him? My shepherd makes me lay down. Are we not experiencing spiritual nourishment when we hear the Word of God? Truly preach from the Word of God? Don't we get spiritual nourishment when we come together and fellowship and love one another? And we do. The Lord leads us to a place of spiritual nourishment with the preaching of the word and the community of the, uh, the, the communion of the fellowship. A second blessing that we experience is that, the, is that the Lord leads me beside quiet waters, still waters. Again, A sheep will not drink from a river that's running wild. 
A sheep will only drink from a quiet, placid water and they will drink from there because they are so sensitive. So the Lord makes me lay down in green pastures and He leads me beside quiet waters. And what happens at this quiet waters? And this is where I want to stay a little bit, is that He restores my soul. So don't you and I need soul restoring? Hasn't sin destroyed our capacity to know the Lord in intimacy? Hasn't our wayward life and, and the things that we do in our private, when nobody is watching us, isn't that destroying our soul? And you know, and, and you know when, when restoration is happening, when there's quietness and peace. And that's when the Lord restores our soul. The Lord gives us a deep satisfaction in knowing Him personally, to know Him as our my shepherd. You know, and, and, and a lot of people would say, you know, I, I became a Christian and God made me a successful businessman. But Jesus didn't die for our sins for us to become successful businessmen or women. Or to become great teachers. Or to become rich and famous and name it and claim it. Put it on a wall. But Jesus Christ died so that you and I can be restored to the Father. Salvation. People would say, you know, like, like I got saved and He gave me great rest. I would say that Jesus is rest. That Jesus, so other people would say again that Jesus gave me the bread of life. And I would say that Jesus is the bread of life. That Jesus gave me the water to drink. He's the water of life. But He is the water of life. He restored, first and foremost, our soul to have a relationship with Him. There should be a longing in our hearts. And, you know, that's why it's so great to have good spiritual friends and you know, reminding, say, like, our personal devotion should be the first thing that we run after. Our running after the Lord should be first and foremost. Not the things that we do for the Lord, but who the Lord is. He's my shepherd. And only in Him is all my needs satisfied. You know, in school, we've learned, and I was in school in America, you know, the two greatest needs are the needs to love and to be loved. And in Christ Jesus, those needs are being fulfilled that we know that our Father loves us unconditionally. It's proven on the cross. For while we were sinners, Christ died. That need is being fulfilled. You know, the, the expression that we would always find to go to a quiet place is an age-old need for restoration. In Psalm 55 or 6, and it's, it, the psalmist expresses, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would, fly, I would fly away to be at rest. And it's a concept that I'm battling with and that I'm thinking of is like why do I need to go away from church or away from fellowship and away from the presence of the Lord to find rest to go to the beach or go to the dam to go fishing or go river fishing to be all alone to find rest isn't it coming to church or coming to fellowship a place where you and I will find rest in the Lord You know, coming to church should be more than just a Sunday duty. It should be a time of like, say, wow, now I'm coming to a place to be refreshed and to be nourished with the Word of God and the, 
and with all the saints singing praises unto His name. It's a fact that Yahweh revives. You know, something that was dead, He makes alive. Were you and I not dead in our trespasses and in our sins, and Jesus Christ came and He found us and He made us alive, He revives me. He refreshes my spirit. And it's a daily occurrence. He's the answer to our, our anxiety. He's the answer to our depression. He's the answer to our, our failures. He's the answer to our disappointments. He takes us who are tired and weak and and just mukh. And he takes his weary, weary souls of ours and he, and he refreshes them. And it happens to be under the Word and to be in the Word and to be in fellowship. Just like an earthly shepherd that leads and guides the, the sheep to places of green grass and stole waters. So our shepherd leads and guides us to his word. If we look at Psalm 19 verse 7, it says, the, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Do you need restoration? The Lord gives do you need wisdom? The Lord gives. Ruth, verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 15 it says, May He also be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age. Proverbs 25, verse 13, Like the cold of snow in a time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to those who send Him. For He refreshes the souls of His Master. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, for though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. And, and, and I hope that in our weariness, in, in our tiredness, in, in our seeking the Lord, and in our daily battles with our flesh, but that we go to the Lord and say, Lord, revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your loving kindness. Restore to me the joy of my salvation so that I can tell those who are lost. Say, there's hope in Christ. For those who are confused and say, but listen, here's the answer. This, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the answer. Where we can tell our young people that these things that we are believing is not just a figment of our imagination. It's not something that I made up to make you go to bed in rest. But here is an eternal God that existed eternally that sent His Son to die for our sins. The third blessing is that this eternal amazing God is leading us on paths of righteousness. He's not just leading us by our emotions. If faith was ever an emotion, none of us would be coming to church. Faith is a fact based upon truth. Truth is a fact. So is our faith is a fact. You see, the, the good shepherd in, back in the day will always lead the sheep on good paths how to get home. He will walk in front of the sheep and the sheep will follow him. I show the Lord knows how to shepherd us. The Lord knows how to lead us. The Lord knows exactly what battles we have to fight for His righteousness. And we know simplified Translation of righteousness is to be in right standing with the Lord. He leads me on His paths of righteousness. 
Psalm 5 verse 8, and it says, the psalmist is speaking about, say, O Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my foes. Make your way straight before me. See, when we first meet the Lord, we think, listen, it's a straight path. Depending on from what denomination you're from or where, how you got saved, and it's amazing that you got saved. But when you get saved and you have that joy of the Lord and you think, man, everything is smooth sailing from here. What a lie. What a lie. Now it's open season for your flesh to come out. It's open season for, for the devils to attack you with things and you are being tempted with things that you didn't even know were a temptation. But it's not smooth sailing when you get born again. But the Lord, like the good shepherd, is leading you on paths of righteousness. Our, our prayer should be, Lord, what is your will? We shouldn't always look for the easy way out. We shouldn't compromise. And I'm talking to myself as well, right? I also need encouragement. Just like my brothers Timbeso in Woodbank. I grew up in Creel, next to Woodbank. You know, we ask the Lord, Lord, lead me on your paths of righteousness. And how does the Lord do that? Through His Word, <laughs> through the congregation, through His Spirit. In Proverbs 8, verse, verse 20, it says, I walk in the way of righteousness, in the midst of paths of justice. You know, and, and it's interesting to see and observe in our own lives that like a lot of times we shout glory, hallelujah, when we have a whole bunch of people agreeing with us. But it, it's difficult and it, it, it takes a person of character to stand for the truth of the Word of God. To say, but listen, this is what the Word says. Never mind what the government says. This is what the Word of God is saying. In Jeremiah 31 verse 8, and said, Behold, I'm bringing them from the north country, and I will gather them from the remote parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and she who labors with child. Together a great company, they will return here. Return, where to, return to Jerusalem in that, because they were, in, they were going to go away in captivity. But the Lord gathers us. And He brings us back on a path of righteousness. And, and this is one of the best sayings. For His name's sake. Not for our sake. Not for our ego's sake. For His name's sake. Psalm 79 verse 9 it says, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the, for the glory of Your name. Ephesians 1 6 again to the, play, to the glory of His grace, to the glory of His name. Imagine how it will look like if you and I are walking on this path following our shepherd and we, we start to proclaim and we start to say for ourselves, but whatever I do in word or deed or whatever I eat is for the glory of His name. And I was so beautifully reminded that, that I preach for the audience of one. Because I'm also part of a church replant. I know what my brother is talking about. But we preach for an for for audience of one. But we are never just one because we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to be reminded that we are worshipping a living God. And our lives is about His glory. The fourth blessing in, in, in verse 4, it says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And our lives are not the easy plane just going forward and like no ups and downs, but we are experiencing in a daily life, in seasons of our lives, 
we're experiencing amazing outpouring of God's Spirit and outpouring of God's blessings on our lives, those mountaintop experiences. But with those come the valley experiences. A spouse that's been sick, a child that's sick, a business that's not doing right, a church not doing right. And then we are experiencing those deep emotional things that tear our hearts apart and we just don't know what to do. And we are running from left to right and we're going, we are seeking help and seeking for advice. Our hearts are gripped with anxiety. And it's part of being in this human condition that we have. The valley of the shadow of death. Because we know, like it's life. Just like sometimes the shepherd had to lead the sheep through deep ravines. Ravines or ravines. Ravines, man. No? Okay, I was right. Yo. I'm almost using all of, up all of my English words, by the way. But the shepherd leads his sheep there uh, through deep ravines. Where he had to like look out. They were in the shadow of death with the predators lurking about. And, and looking for a way wandering sheep to devour. And, 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 and isn't our temptations the same? We are tempted away from the presence of the Lord and when our sin has captured us, it's destroying our soul. Destroying our capacity and our confidence and our, and our boldness to worship the Lord. But the shepherd doesn't leave us alone. Because you see, the Lord is with us. One of my favorite verses, in, uh, and I know what I'm like, it's one of my favorite verses is Hebrews 13 verse 5. It says, the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, this is the blessing in the valley, in the darkness, in the place of fear. It's not the absence of fear. But in the place of fear, like, he will not fear. Because the Lord is with him. Your family will leave you. Your family will depart from you. Your family will gossip about you and slander you. Your family will turn you into the police. The family will not help you when you desperately need help. And they might not be there. But the Lord is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you have that assurance that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you? Another verse that I, that I used to meditate on, on, on a lot is 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 that says that, that the, even though if I'm not faithful, the Lord remains faithful because He cannot deny Himself. And it is the same thing here. It's like even if I depart from the Lord, the Lord never departs from me. And he, and he brings me back with His staff. He brings me back with His rod. And the Lord disciplines those He loves. My brother, my sister, I pray that you will pray, ask the Lord, Lord, discipline me. But remember your loving kindness. <laughs> remember your kindness. When we were missionaries in Thailand. Amazing. It sounds exotic. And it was, it was it's life, right? And then my wife prayed a prayer and said, like, and said, what was the prayer? Lord, sift me like we. Oh, sorry, strengthen me. She prayed a prayer. Like we... Yeah, she prayed a prayer. Say, Lord, strip me of everything that is not of you. Oh, my word. <laughs> <sighs> wow. I said amen on that prayer because I like, okay, Lord, what a nice prayer. Strip me of everything that's not of you. And wow, did we go through a stripping? A heavy stripping. Like almost losing her, she almost lost her life twice. And I'm not exaggerating. 
But now when we pray things like that and say, Lord, purify my heart, but Lord, purifying my heart according to your word, according to your loving kindness, according to your mercy and your grace. But, you know, but when we ask the Lord, because the Lord loves us and he disciplines us, and he will strip you and me everything that is not of him, everything that we depend upon more than the Lord, he will take away from us. It's not nice. But it happens. See, and that is a blessing. That even in the shadow of the, where I, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And, 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 and we are going to, and I want to come to where I want to go, so I just want to go through this. So, and then, the Amplified says, Yes, though I walk through the, through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. For you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort me. You know, and I think when we are walking through this valley of death and the shadow of death, and we are walking through those things, and, and it's like a little child that walks with his father, and how brave and how dapper this child is and say, but listen, I, uh, I can do anything because my father is with me. Don't, don't, make, don't make trouble. My dad is here. And it's not like me, a short dad. You know, when my daughter is looking to a big guy, I say, don't look for trouble. My dad is here. It's like, it's not like that because God does no equal. And who comforts us? It's the Holy Spirit, isn't it? He's the great comforter. The Holy Spirit, we receive the Holy Spirit at the point of regeneration. And we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And, and God will never break His seal. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And we see the Lord as point B. Now that was point B. Now I'm going to point B. The Lord is our provider. Psalm 23 verse 5 you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. And what a beautiful picture of, of hospitality, right? In the Middle East, in the stands, if you go to Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and those places in the Middle East, you know, their hospitality is actually really great. If you go there, they come, they, they ask you, they don't ask you how, you, how are you? They ask you, have you eaten? And they prepare a table for you. And you eat with them. And while you're eating with them, you are protected and, and, and your life is secure. And they will even go hungry to give food to you and they will give you food in excess. And they will anoint your head with oil. The oil of gladness, like you are precious, you are significant, you are welcome, I accept your presence. It's unlike what our Savior experienced with the Pharisee, right? When the woman in, in, in Luke 7, when the woman came and she broke an alabaster box and she worshipped Jesus the way he should be worshipped. And the guy was complaining, and like a lot of us, when, like, like me, complaining, say, oh, the Lord, you know, we could have used those things for this and this and this. And Jesus said to him, but I came to your house and you didn't even wash my head, you didn't anoint my head with oil. And how beautiful, like here, it's like we're sitting on the banquet table of our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our enemies. He has made a table for us and He is lavishing His grace upon you and me. And He anoints our head with oil. We have the Holy Spirit within us. Yeah, in the presence of our enemies. You know, I, I didn't grow up as a Christian. I was an atheist up until the age of 20 years old. Up until somebody wanted to kill me in Creel. Also a dangerous area. No? Huh? And the Lord opened up His arms and His heart to me and He says, but you are my beloved Son. I accept you and my beloved. You are born again. I didn't do anything to get saved. I only believed. 
I didn't know anything about God. And here, here our, like our Savior is treating us as generous guests at His table. He's a generous host and He's like just lavishing His grace and His love and His mercy upon us. And, and I come to the last part, is the part, um, the C, our faith response. You know, psalm 23 is such a famous psalm and it has been played in movies that, that blaspheme the Lord's name, but you will get to a funeral scene and you will hear the priest in the, in the background that says like, oh, Oh, but how does it go? <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Like, I shall not want you. will make me like, and you hear that in the background. You, yeah, I've heard it in a rap song, cool, LL Cool J or something like that. But it's such a famous song. But, you know, we as believers, how should we, our faith response be to this? And we should look at these words. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And it's an interesting way to look at it. It's like those things follow me. I don't run after those things. I don't become a Christian to have a BMW or BMW is a nice car. I would not know. I don't drive one. But I, 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 don't, like, I don't chase after the material things in this life. But I do what I do and my devotion is to the Lord. And in His good time and in His good will, these things will happen. Maybe not the BMW. But we have the good presence of the Lord in our lives, don't we? We have His loving kindness that we are assured of. Even in discipline. Hopefully like David, you and I will realize that the loyal love of the Lord is with us. And that loyal love of the Lord will follow us every step that we take. You know, when, when we look at this verse, we cannot in any way, shape or form come to the most important message in our own lives. And the question is, can you say with the psalmist like the, that possessive pronoun and said like my shepherd my shepherd the one that loves me the one that gave his life for me so that I can live and he's not a dead God he is resurrected from the dead in John 10 it speaks about the Lord knows his sheep and his sheep knows him do you know the Lord did you hear your name being called by Him? And if you have heard the Gospel, the Gospel is, is very wide. It is like Jesus existed in eternity past. He pre-existed as God. Jesus is God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. And God became man. We see that in John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. In verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Now this God came to earth, and He walked upon the earth, and He had a perfect life. No sin. But He didn't go to the religious people. He didn't go to the good people. He, he went to the to the. To the, to the tax collectors and the prostitutes. He went to the worst of the worst, people like you and me. And he preached the good news. And for that good news, he died. And he was raised from the dead. And he went up into heaven and he's praying for us right now. He has a ministry in heaven, interceding for you and me, being our advocate in heaven. Because we still have a slanderer. We still have the devil accusing us before God day and night. But we have a Savior that intercedes for us. And we are for certain just the way Jesus came the first time. We know that Jesus is coming back. 
And He is coming back for, for those who, who called upon His name. In faith, you are saying to Jesus, Lord, save me. I cannot save myself. Because our great shepherd knows your name. Our great shepherd has died for your sins. Our great shepherd has redeemed you. Which means basically he went into the slave market of sin. And he bought the slave and he set him free. By faith you and I are saved. We are justified by, before the Father. Which is two ways. Two things that happened. I'm forgiven for my sin. And God has imputed His righteousness unto us. So for when you are saved, you are born again. The Father sees the Son. And I'm asking a serious question for you. Are you certain if you would die today that you will go to heaven? Are you certain that if, if the bell rings for your time to end, that you will be face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are, we are knowing for certain. It is not your good works that saves you. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8. And I'm asking. In closing. That when we, when we see. And when we read. The Lord is our shepherd. That you will see that it's all about relationship. That the Lord Jesus Christ, our great chief shepherd, wants to have a relationship with you. And I'm asking you, I'm, I'm pleading with you, don't leave today if your life is not right with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Pastor Rocky is here and Henny is here and the deacons are here. I'm not sure who's the deacons, but go speak, to, go speak to them. If you have made a decision today to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and that you can say without a shadow of doubt, my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we have security with the Lord. We have love with the Lord. And we follow the Lord because He is our great shepherd. Amen? Okay, so let's pray. So I'm going to have two prayers. I'm going to have a prayer for, for all of us, a general prayer. And then I'm going to have a special prayer that I want to include you with. And that is a prayer of salvation. If you, believe in if you believe in Jesus Christ for the first time, I want you to put your hand up so that I can inc include you in a prayer. And, and everybody, you are welcome to do that. So, so the first prayer. So Father, as, as we are thanking you for your faithfulness, thank you that you are leading us. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will keep on guiding us, that you keep on restoring our souls, that you keep on um, lavishing your love upon us, Lord. Father, in the second prayer, I'm praying for that person that's not certain of their eternal destiny. And right now, if, if you are asking the Lord to change your life, I want you to put your hand up Indicate to me if I should pray for you. Thank you very much. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your good grace of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will lead and guide us. Help us, Lord, to follow you with a passion and with a devotion 
But it's only possible through your spirit and in your word. In Jesus' name, amen.